When you're on holiday lying by the pool, wondering why the sausages in the full English you found don't taste the same as the ones back home, do you ever think to yourself, wow, I really can't wait to retire and do this more often? But wait, there's a problem. You spent all year saving for a 2k week-long vacation, and you think once you finish working, you're going to be able to do that more often once you're bringing in less money? No chance. That's why you need a self-invested personal pension and to follow the steps in this video to maximise your income in retirement. Yes, here in the UK we do get a state pension, but the max state pension is just over £9,000 and that's not going to set your pants on fire. Notice I said max. And if you want to know if you're going to get the max payment or anything else to do with a state pension, then make sure you check out my video on that after this one. First, we need to know what a SIP is. So a self-invested personal pension is basically just a pension that you manage yourself. You pick the pension scheme, you add the money, you decide where that money's invested, and within reason, you decide when you can take that money back out again. Think of it like a piggy bank or a money box. You get to pick the box you like the look of, you choose where to keep it safe, you add small amounts of money, as and when you can, and you get to decide when to smash it open. Not yet. Except with this piggy bank, your mum puts a little bit in as well. Thanks mum. Okay, so not your mum, but the government, in the form of tax relief, which is 20% for basic taxpayers, 40% for higher taxpayers, and 45% for additional taxpayers, all the way up to £40,000. So as long as you don't put more than £40,000 into this SIP, you're going to pay no tax on that money. For easy math's sake, let's say you got your take home pay, and you're a basic rate taxpayer. You put in £80 and £100 goes into your SIP. As for higher rate taxpayers, you put in £60 and £100 goes into your SIP. Additional rate taxpayers, you put in 55 and that's right, £100 goes into your SIP. Now it's worth noting that SIP providers only claim the basic rate of tax, so they only claim 20%. Um, they do this automatically, but it does mean anything above and beyond that, so if you're a higher rate taxpayer or an additional rate taxpayer, you need to claim the rest of the money yourself. Don't worry, it's nice and easy. You do this through your tax return, so your self-assessment tax return, if you do one. And if you don't do one, you can just call HMRC directly. Nice and easy. Now, loads of people, in fact, thousands of people each year forget to do this or don't know about this and just think that the SIP provider is claiming the whole of the tax relief. No, they don't, and the government's not about to knock on your door and say, actually, you pay too much tax and we owe you some money. Have it back. Don't happen, does it? Make sure you do this. Don't leave money on the table. Now we're hoping this money is going to grow inside our SIP and when it does there's nothing to pay on it. So think of it as a tax wrapper, anything inside, once it's inside and no matter how much it grows to, you will not pay tax on that while it's in your pension pot. With a SIP we decide where it goes. As a result you can get the risk tolerance you're happy with. We can pick higher risk things like stocks and shares or lower risk things like bonds and trusts. You can even go with untraditional things like gold, property, perhaps ETFs. Whatever you can think of, you'll be able to find a company or a way to invest in it through a SIP. We can also make sure we control what fees we pay, so the fees aren't eating into our growth. I mean, think about that piggy bank. If your uncle said, hey, I'll look after it for you, but you've got to mow the lawn once a week, and on the other hand, you've got your nan saying, yeah, yeah, I'll have it, but just make us a cup of tea, who are you going to go with? Now, there are many low-cost options in the pension sector. And one of my favourite is Vanguard, that's if you want to do it yourself. They have a wide range of ETFs and index funds in most of the major markets. There's also other things like robo-investors, so you can pay companies to do your investing for you. Again, you'll typically pay quite low fees. It'd be slightly higher than something like Vanguard, but it's peace of mind if you don't want to make them decisions yourself. No matter who you choose, you want to employ a set and forget mentality. Every time you get paid, a small amount gets paid in. This is the idea of paying yourself first, and it means the money's already gone out of your account before you have a chance to spend it. How often you said, yeah, I'll see what's left at the end of the month, and I'll use that to save. Don't work, does it? The thing is, we always live to our means. If we've got money, generally we spend it. And the same is true if we've took money out at the start of the month. We'll find a way to make it to the end of the month if that money wasn't there in the first place. But Liam, I don't have any spare cash. Well, that's the beauty of a SIP. You pay in as and when you can. Say you've made some savings on your outgoings or you didn't spend as much on a food shop this week or perhaps you've got a bonus, pay some in. Maybe you've made some extra cash for a side hustle, you've sold some stuff you no longer needed on Facebook Marketplace or you've done some overtime, pay some in. And yeah, I know it's a rarity, but if you get a pay rise, what's the harm in putting a little bit of that into your pension? 
you're not used to living on this money. You've not had to find it from anywhere. It's extra money. Keep a bit for yourself, put a bit in your pension. You won't notice. However you do it, the key is to build this as a long life money habit. Start small and work your way up. Five pound a week, 10 pound a month, whatever it might be. Get used to living without that little bit of extra money or doing something extra to bring that bit of money in. And then once you've achieved that, perhaps up it a little bit. If you do this in small stages, it's not that noticeable. It will become part of your everyday life and you'll thank yourself in retirement. Now, if you've watched my video on workplace pensions, you'll know this already. And if you haven't, make sure you watch that after this video to maximize your workplace pension. Think about all those small pension pots from old employers that are no longer being contributed to. Make a list of everyone you've worked for that you've had a pension with, get in contact with them and ask for a fund transfer form or a fund request form. With this done, you can gather all those small amounts of money and put it into one low cost pension fund that you control. It gives you a meaningful starting lump and it helps motivate you to add to it over time. You might even be surprised how much you've actually got in there. Now don't worry, you can run a SIP alongside your workplace pension, but the rules aren't completely dictated by somebody else as to when you can get hold of your money. Currently, you can take it 10 years earlier than state pension age. So for me, that's age 58. Now you could use your SIP to fund early or semi-retirement while you're waiting for your other pensions to kick in. And you can also take 25% tax free in a lump sum like you can with other pensions. Yes, you pay tax on the money when you take it out, but your income is likely to be a lot lower in retirement and you made all them tax free gains up until that point. So there really is no better retirement vessel. I just wish I could find one that looked like a VW camper with surfboards on it. So there we have it. Find a low cost SIP and transfer all your old workplace pensions into it. Add cash, tax free, as and when you can, Claim any relief that you're not getting above 20%. Build lifelong money habits by paying yourself first. Start small, increase steadily, and aim big. I hope that helps, and if you haven't already, check out these videos next.